Hey guys. Hello. How's it going? I saw you typing, and I was worried that I my my uh, audio thing didn't work. But you <laughs> no, I just try to get myself organized. Was that Nick who was saying hello back there? Yep. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm going to butcher your name. I apologize. Thiago? Thiago? Okay. Maybe they walked away. Doo -doo -doo. Oops. So Clemens, did you, I, I apologize. I was in phone calls, but did you get a chance to see anything from your side relative to the demo? Uh, um, let me see. I, okay, no, I, did I, I'm still seeing failures, so I don't know whether I, I haven't had a chance to debug it yet. So I was hoping maybe it was on your side. <laughs> um, are you? I, well, I can put it this way: Do you actually see the incoming messages? Um, no. No. Hmm. Thing. Like until, yeah, I haven't looked at the logs for the stream logs for. A okay, little hold on. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I have the right URL because I had to typo in it before. So. Yeah. What's the. Uh, uh, well, actually, no, it's what I sent you before. So. Yes. No. I, let me, so that. Uh, oh, wait. The 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 you have some artifact at the at the end of the URI. Oh, what the heck is that? I have no idea where it comes from. Oh, you know what? I bet it is. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me see if getting rid of that fixes it. Yeah, I think I added it to the stuff that was there before. So what's what's the tail end of the URI supposed to be? Is it is it uh, dash dash? Okay. No, I'm still getting a failure. What failure? Because well, I don't, I'm looking at the logs from here and it's it's not it's not ending up inside of my really code. Okay, so if you're not even getting called, hmm, it's a little disturbing. Let me open Fiddler again so I can see. The... So if I hit it with a browser, should I get a 400 or should I get something uh, different? You should not, you should not get anything. The browser. Okay. Well, okay, let's, let's take this offline. Something's obviously going wrong. Don't know which side, but we'll see. All right, let's see who else is on. Um, hi, Bernd. Hi there. Hello. Uh, Tiago, are you there yet? Or Tiago, Tiago? Okay. I got a very full agenda today. Hi, Rachel. Hi. How's it going? Okay. Cool. And Victor. Oh, Victor, I might get. Never mind. <laughs> Victor, are you there yet? Yes, I am. Excellent. And what about Christoph? I'm here. Hi. Hello. And I apologize. V A I B H A V. Hi, are you there? Um, Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can. Excellent. Thank you. Which company are you with, by the way? I'm sorry. Is this your first time on the call? Yes, it's my first time. Uh, I work with Nordstrom. Nordstrom, excellent. Okay, thank you. Yep. And welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, Heinz, are you there? 
Yes, I am here. Excellent. Okay, what about the person T H I A G O? Tiago? Tiago? Okay, I'll have to sync up with them later. Do do do. Hope everybody had a good vacation, at least for the US folks who had Thanksgiving. Although it is, it, it is a kind of a vacation when the U.S. is on vacation, isn't it? Everybody else gets to have less work, I assume, or less chatter. So or finally get something done. There you go, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, my wife, I think, is convinced that it's like a mini vacation for her when I go on a business trip. So it's, I figure it's the same kind of thing for you guys. Uh, all right, Steve-O, are you there? Hello, everyone. Hello. And Ginger? Yes, sir. Hello. And what about Varun? Yep, I'm here. Hello. Excellent. Let's see. I think I got everybody. I assume most of you guys are going to be at KubeCon, right? Yep. Excellent. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's see, Roberto, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, there was someone else go flying by. Good, good morning. This is John Mitchell. John Mitchell. I should know your phone number by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was someone else I saw. Hi, this Sonia. is Sonia Kraftiev. That's it, Sonia. Welcome. Thank you. Is this, I can't, I apologize. Is it, this isn't your first time on the call, is it? It is my first time on the call. Oh, it is. Excellent. What, and what company are you with? Twistlock. Twistlock. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Farad, are you there? Farad? Rachel, you're on there twice. Yeah, my internet went out, so I did a rejoin. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, Ferrard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm representing Kathy also. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. And what about Tiago? Tiago? T H I A G O? Are you there? Yes, Tiago. I'm here. Okay. And which company are you with, by the way? I'm from Everdis. I'm sorry. What was that again? Everdis. E V E R E S. Excellent. E V E E V E R R I S. I S. Like that? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. All right, is there anybody I'm missing? Doo -doo -doo -doo. We'll give another 30 seconds or so to three past the hour. Ah, Mr. Curtis, are you there? Jim? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Ah, we have a low attendance today. That's unusual for us. All right. As soon as my clock flips over to three pass, we'll get started. Hi, Neil, you there? Neil or Klaus? Okay, we'll catch up with you guys later. Uh, All right, let's go. Klaus, oh. Klaus, hello, Sorry, Klaus. Sorry, I was somehow slow. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, Neil, are you able to come off mute for a sec? Okay, tell you what, we'll catch up later with these guys. Let's go and get started. Um, doo -doo -doo, we've got a very full agenda. Let's see how much we can get through. So community time. So this is a quick time for people who may not normally join the call to bring up any topics they'd like to uh, mention or have a short discussion on. I know we have a couple of new people. Any other, any new topics people want to bring up? 
All right, in that case, moving on. <clears throat> okay, SDK. Uh, we did have a phone call yesterday, our weekly call. Uh, good news, we now have a C-sharp implementation, thanks to Clemens and Microsoft. Um, for the most part, you guys can look at the meeting minutes, which is in this link right here. Uh, I think the only thing kind of worth mentioning is that from a versioning perspective, and I sent that note about this last night, um, we will not be versioning the SDKs at the same level as the spec themselves, meaning the SDKs will be able to change their version over as they see fit or as necessary. Um, the way people will then know what version of the SDK goes with which version of the cloud event spec is by checking the documentation. So we just need to make sure that the docs are up to date on all that stuff. Um, if you have any concerns about that, please go ahead and respond back to my note or join the, the weekly call, but that was the decision that they made yesterday. So I just wanted to bring that up for you guys because I think everything else is pretty standard, but that was the only thing that's kind of exciting. All right, any questions on that? All right, I don't see Kathy on the call and I don't believe anything's happened with the workflow stuff. So I don't think there's anything to say there. Uh, relative to KubeCon, um, as of right now, I don't think we have any new slides. We just have the Shanghai ones. I was gonna take the action item to convert the slides over to the, uh, to the Seattle template that they have. I assume they have a different template. I haven't checked yet, but I assume it's out there. So I was gonna do that conversion. Um, but I, what, I, what I really wanted to do though was to open the option up for anybody else on the call or part of the group itself. If you would like to have a speaking role or you know, do part of the presentation because we have an intro and a deep dive, uh, please speak up and reach out to us offline. Um, I think the default is probably gonna be that it's either gonna, it's gonna be Clemens, uh, Kathy, and myself, um, between the three of us handling the intro and deep dive like we did in Shanghai. But that doesn't mean other people can't participate if they, if they want to. Um, so please just speak up you know, after the call, just drop me a note and we'll figure out some way to get you in there um, if, you do, if you really do wanna present. And of course, um, as soon as I do the conversion of the slides over to the new template, I will make, you, make that available to you guys to look at, to review, and if you feel like there's any changes you'd like to make about anything, please speak up or, or go ahead and make comments in the presentation itself. Okay. Are there any questions or comments about that? All right, cool, thank you. Um, so the interop demo, uh, we are planning on doing, showing this. Um, um, in Shanghai, we showed it very briefly during the intro, whether it stays with the intro or we do it in the deep dive or a little bit of both, don't know yet. We still need to talk to um, Clement and Kathy about that. But the demo is still, it is there. Uh, we, I think we have five or six different endpoints right now. If you'd like your endpoint, I'm sorry, if you'd like to put up an endpoint and be included in that, um, they look at the working doc in this link right here under work. Um, uh, there's, you have um, obviously until the day of to get your endpoint up there. It's not a very large endpoint, relatively easy to do. Um, but there are, you know, we, the sooner you get up there, the better, so we can do some debugging if things do go wrong. Um, but you, you do have time to get it up there. The only thing worth mentioning from my point of view is, as of right now, um, the endpoint uses version 0 0.1. Actually, I should fix that. It's not, there's no V in there. We're using 0 0.1 as the version string for the spec version field. And obviously, that's not right. We're not doing 0 0.1. Everybody's doing the latest version of the spec, which is some undefined thing. Um, what, we, what I'd like to propose is that we switch to 0 0.2 in anticipation of us doing 0 0.2 in the relatively near future, hopefully before KubeCon, but even if we slip, it's, it's, I think 0 0.2 is more accurate than 0 0.1 because 0 0.1 is basically a flat out lie. Um, so what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm proposing to the demo guys that are working on it. And I'm not hearing any pushback yet, but I wanted to mention it to you guys so that you're aware of it and give you guys a chance to raise any concern about the fact that 0 0.2 will appear in the uh, message flows that we demo at KubeCon itself. Okay, any questions or concerns about that? Or any questions about the interrupt demo at all? Yes. Just make the uh, the version change soon so that we can uh, make sure everything's working. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. Um, for those of you who are not in the demo uh, Slack channel, I was going to make the change to the controller tonight. So hopefully, at some point during the evening, if you change your function over to to support the zero point two, then everything should work by tomorrow morning. But I was going to make the change tonight on, on my side. Okay. Yeah, the, the problem I ran into uh, is uh, that spec version is an invalid header in uh, 0 0.1. Um, yeah. And so 
so we have to do it. We have to do it. It's, 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 it's really required. Yep. So like I said, that's why I want to get up there tonight. All right, cool. Let's move on to the more fun stuff, the PRs. Okay, so let's see. First up is Clemens. Do, 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 do. Okay, would you like to quickly talk to this one? Yeah, there were there were some uh, um, concerns raised in uh, issue 185 about there was some some lack of clarity about you know how some of the data types work and how do you um, deal with them. So I'm trying to get some clarity in them. So first of all, um, uh, making clear that the URI reference and the timestamp are not just um, strings, but they are um, following a particular uh, scheme. And then I've also added um, some uh, explanatory text that says um, that you can effectively um, infer either from the mapping table, if you know, so for instance, for a date, uh, for sorry, for time, you know that it's a date, and even though it shows up as on the wire as a string, um, you, you know that you have to do a, a conversion into a native type, whatever your SDK is. The same is true for um, the URI reference, and for instance, in the, in the C Sharp SDK, I actually I surfaced that as a URI type and a, and a daytime type, etc. So that's basically uh, explaining um, that you use, should use inference. And then at the bottom, um, I further clarify this. If you find in the data, in the data attribute, you find a string, but the, data, the string is, a, um, uh, is basically before encoded, and you are not expecting something that's that's a text, um, or it's it's a it's a content type that you don't understand, um, then um, you're effectively decoding that um, as uh, uh, into binary from basic to four if it's basic to four. And I believe that you're not changing semantics. This is just clarifying what no, the intent was all clarifying. along, right? There's right. no there's no uh, um, there's no change of rules here. Um, right. That's effectively, and, and I'm, for instance, in, in implementing, so now that I've actually coded once through the whole thing, um, it's something that is, is fairly automatic. Right. Okay. Any questions or comments for Clemens? All right. Not hearing any. Is there any objection to adopting this then or approving it? Cool. I like easy ones. Cool. Thank you, Clemens. Thank you. Rachel, I believe yours is relatively easy as well. Give me a sec. All right. Rachel, you want to quickly talk to this one? Uh, this, this adds the media types that uh, Jim Day asked for when we accepted the proto. Right. And, then you, and then you pointed out that we were missing a must in the uh, JSON format as well to say which type is that one? Yeah, I just updated them to be the same. Yep. So it's consistent. Okay. Any questions or comments on this one for Rachel? All right. Any objection to approving that one? Excellent. Thank you. Now, next one is from Jem. Unfortunately, I don't believe Jem is on the call. He mentioned to me he wasn't going to be able to make it today, but I believe this is just fixing the proto buff um, to align with the uh, property change that went in last week or the week before I can't remember when, I guess two weeks ago. Hopefully this is more of a typo type change, but I want to give people a chance to look at it. Anybody see any problem with these changes, Rachel in particular? No, nope, they seem good to me. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments on this one? Okay, any objection to approving this one? Excellent. Thank you, guys. All right, next. This one's from me. So um, uh, we've made a lot of really critical decisions as we've been developing the spec, and um, some of them we could use some explanation in a non-normative document. Um, so for example, in this particular case, I decided that it might be useful to add some uh, explanation about why we chose to do the extensions the way we did into the primer itself. And so basically this PR just adds some additional text, uh, mainly to the primer, just explaining some of the reasons why we did what we did. Um, 
I, all I tried to do was just to summarize the discussions we had in the past and, and explain it. Um, I then also um, added a pointer to it. Um, actually, I added a little bit of clarity saying extensions need to be placed as top level things, but they can be, the extensions themselves can be nested, meaning they could be uh, structures, not just single property kind of things, just for clarity's sake. And then add a pointer to the new primer text. This in no way changes any semantics whatsoever. It's just my first pass at trying to allow people who are new to the group to understand why we did what we did. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Obviously, if there are additional changes later on, people want to make this text, we can make those, but I just wanted to get an initial pass out there for people to understand the initial thinking. Um, I think that's been out there for a little bit of time. Are there any questions or comments on that? Okay, any objection to approving? Cool, thank you guys. Um, what was this one? This one's for me as well. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, yeah, this one actually has been open for a while. Uh, originally, I think um, Austin made a comment about how it'd be nice if people uh, use versions in some of our properties, in particular, which one was this? In like, for example, the type. Uh, people may want to put a version string in there the same way we expect them to do it on the schema URL. And it was a relatively minor change, but then I think Clemens made a comment about how um, people need to be careful when they start changing that version string in there because it's going to be viewed as a, uh, a, as a breaking change by consumers. So I added some text to the primer to give some background on that thought. And Clemens, I think you said you reviewed this text and you were okay with it. Has, yeah, has I was a, okay with it. Okay. So hopefully people had a chance to look at that. Um, are there any questions or comments about this one? I think it's been out there for at least a couple of days for review. I, I don't think this makes any normative change whatsoever. It's just explanation text. All right, any objection then to adopting this one? All right, cool, thanks. All right, so next one. Now this one I opened up today. Um, and I know, like I said in the comments, typically um, for non-typo changes, we want them to be out there for a little while. I do actually kind of consider this to be a, a bit of a typo. It's not quite a typo, but it's awfully, awfully close. I noticed this morning while talking to Clemens that we never actually say in the spec what the exact string is to use for the spec version property. In other words, is it 0 0.1? Is it V0.1? Is it something different? We never actually say. And this is actually obviously very important, so you get interoperability. And the, the demos and SDKs have all been assuming 0 0.1, at least for the, the current version of the spec. So all I really want to do was to add this little bit of text here that says, if you're going to be compliant to this version of the spec, you must use 0 0.1. Obviously, the minute we approve 0 0.2, this will have to change with everything else in the spec relative to the version number. But I thought it was important that we get this out there because we never actually say what the version string looks like. So hopefully you'll you'll accept the my apologies for this being a little bit bigger than a typo but not much more anybody have any questions or comments on this any objections to adopting it if you feel like if you feel like you want to wait a week I'm, I'm okay with that but if no one has any concerns i'd rather get it in there okay not hearing any objections thank you guys very much whoops what did i do all right, cool. Now, I sent out a note, I think a day or two ago, saying that we have three different issues that are right now officially tagged at 0 0.2, but they're kind of in a holding pattern because the original authors have not gone back to us on the feedback that we've given them. Um, so rather than just closing it for lack of activity, I'd rather give them a little more time to, to think about it or to respond back to us. However, I don't want us I don't want that to necessarily block us from going to 0 0.2. So what I'd like to do is propose that we move these out of the 0 0.2 milestone. I don't believe any of these are breaking. And obviously, since we're not talking about a 1.0, we can always make changes as we go along anyway. But I didn't want to make the decision unilaterally. I wanted to give you guys a chance to say, no, you think some, either of these three need to stay in 0 0.2. So does anybody think any of these three must stay in 0 0.2? Okay. So we'll move those out. Thank you guys. All right, now for another fun one. So Kevin, I apologize, I can't remember Kevin's last name. Oh, Kevin Wei, Wen. He is proposing 
that we change spec version to cloud events version. Let me just stop there and open the floor. <laughs> what do you guys think? So I just dealt with that. <laughs> um, yes. Specifically because we had the, um, uh, because you were using in the sample, uh, in, the, in, the, in the demo, you were using spec version with uh, 0 0.1 and that combination is invalid uh, because we introduced spec version after 0 0.1. Um, however, the way I've solved that in, uh, in the SDK, so the, the C Sharp SDK now kind of works with, with either. Um, and uh, if it detects spec version, it basically sets, sets uh, um, it to 0 0.2 um, even if um, it contains 0 0.1, it basically overrides it. Uh, since we're since we're um, moving off a, a very experimental version, and we want to land that spec version, um, I, I have not really had any problems with doing the implementation in a way that it's tolerant of 0 0.1, but then otherwise is uh, um, basically aligned with 0 0.2. So it doesn't. There's no change necessary for for from my implementation perspective. Right. I think he's asking a different question. I think he basically says, one, um, this is a breaking change for people that adopted 0 0.1, and obviously it is because it's a property name change. But I believe also he's claiming that um, spec version itself is not descriptive enough, and he'd like it to switch back to cloud events version because it's more descriptive. And I wanted to basically open the floor and let people say whether they think we should change it back, change it to something else, because I know version itself as a, as a word has also been proposed. So I'd like to hear- I have the same theory, but I don't have a good argument for it. I just think that's more descriptive. Wh which is more descriptive? The cloud events version. Okay, so the more verbose one, okay. Yeah, this is Roberto. So I, we discussed this extensively when we, when, uh, when we made the changes recently to remove event from all the prefixes. And I think we should leave it at this. I mean, we had opportunity to discuss it and I don't see a good reason to change it again, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and, and so let me jump in here just from a procedural perspective. I know we've never formally, I don't think the governance stack formally says this, but maybe it should at some point is, you know, the idea of reopening issues is obviously something it's always a possibility. And in other groups that I've been in, usually we only allow people to reopen issues when there's sort of new information to be presented that maybe wasn't considered before. But simply reopening it because someone felt like we made the wrong choice without new information usually is frowned upon. Um, I, this may fall in that category, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to, to mention that, you know, I don't think any of us wants to necessarily reopen this can of worms, but I did want to at least give the opportunity yeah, I just think this introduces churn into the spec unnecessarily. I mean, this really doesn't have anything to our spec, and I, I think it's just mm. unnecessary. Oh, okay. But I would argue, okay, this spec version itself um, is not the right word. We are, we are potentially change it again in the future to version it. Somebody else will raise the question, okay, spec version is not the right choice, right? Either way, keep it with uh, the cloud. This is Kevin. Yeah. Oh, you're. Oh, hi, Kevin. <laughs> hi. hi. Cool. I just joined in. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in office. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I would prefer either we take one step further to uh, use a version, or we take one step back with a more descriptive uh, cloud events version. Yeah. So. Take one step back, definitely have benefit on my side. I, I don't have to uh, change my code. Uh, but uh, if we want to make it okay, simpler, uh, less verbose, then we should take version instead of spec version. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And thank you for joining the call. Appreciate that. Hey, this is Dan. Um, when we discussed this previously, I, I don't remember exactly, but I thought we left it open. Um, to possibly changing version, um, and someone was going to make a, a pull request to discuss that separately. Um, but I thought we decided definitely not to do cloud events. I think this brings up some possible new information, but we did discuss that 
this will be a breaking change and we knew it would be a breaking change. Um, and we accepted that because we were only at 0 0.1. Um, so I don't know that it introduces much new information, but I do. I thought we left it open uh, to making it version instead of spec version. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember whether we did that or not. You, you could be right. My memory is horrible. I, yeah. well, and it, it could have ended differently than what I remember. <laughs> so, but I thought at some point we discussed that. Right. Okay. Thank you. It, Anybody uh, else want to chime in here? Uh, yeah, Rohit here. So I also feel like uh, either uh, we keep it simple, it's just version, or we keep it how it was earlier, like cloud events version. Like a spec version also doesn't look like a very good name to me as well. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to Hi, this in? is Vladimir. Um, okay. Hi, this is Vladimir. Um, I prefer to leave it as is. Uh, if you consider from the point of view of the user, so they are looking into some events, they see a property, uh, this is a spec version, so they know that this uh, relates to the version of the specification. Um, I understand that there might be some uh, rework done uh, on the side of who implemented uh, 0 0.1 in code, but I feel we are so early in, in our uh, understanding and learning about events that a change in this level at 0 0.1, uh, we should not um, go with the legacy code as, as uh, being the foundation for the specification at such an early stage. And I think uh, over time, um, uh, changes like this will become smaller and smaller and we'll have them less and less. So um, I prefer to leave it as is. I feel it is descriptive enough. Uh, the version refers to the version of specification, so I feel there is no confusion there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else want to chime in before I start picking up people to try to get them to speak up? Okay, I'm going to pick on Klaus, just because I like your name. Klaus, do you have an opinion on this one? <laughs> well, I also like spec version. I think, I mean, cloud events is already evident as it's either part of a map or um, prefixed, depending on the car on the transport. But um, spec is somehow a bit more descriptive because there could be other things that would be version, like the event type or whatever, and, and this could create misunderstandings. But spec version is short and descriptive enough. Okay. Um, I have an idea for a proposal, but before I put it out there, is there anybody else that would like to say something or voice an opinion? Okay. So based upon what I'm hearing so far, it seems to me that the argument for going to, or going back to cloud events version because of the breaking change is something that I think not everybody, but most people seem to not necessarily accept as a, as a valid argument. Basically saying, hey, we're not at 1.0 yet. The backwards compatibility thing is just a fact of life. It's a, it's a 0 0.1. So that, that's not part of the argument is what I think I'm kind of hearing. So I think the, the, the question before us really comes down to, do we want the current spec version or do we want it to be just version? And I think that's really the question in front of us. So I guess my question for the group is, if you, if you accept that as the, as the real question, is do we wanna basically open this door up to have another vote? I think that's what it's probably gonna come down to because I'm not hearing anybody give a, a, an argument that seems to be swaying one side or the other. And I do kind of get the sense that maybe we are kind of 50-50 about whether it should be version, because that's simpler, versus spec version, because yeah, it's simple, but it's still a little descriptive. Both seem to be about 50-50 from what I'm hearing so far. And I'm not quite sure how to resolve that other than to take some sort of vote at some point. But to me, we first need to ask the question of, do we want to reopen this at all? Because we did make a decision, and I don't want us again to have it a reopening previous decisions. But this is kind of a big one. So I'd like to hear whether people think, nope, it's sort of an out of order thing and we should accept the decision until there's new information. Hi, this is John Mitchell. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I, I haven't heard anything to justify like reopening the whole discussion. Yeah, I agree with that. This is Roberta. I agree with Victor. Okay. Is there anybody who strongly feels like this is worthy of a reopening of the discussion? Or, or they feel like there actually is new information, either one of those. 
Okay. Um, I guess, does that imply that our decision is we're going to leave it as is? I don't want to force this on people because I know, for example, Kevin, you feel strongly enough to open up the issue in the PR. Um, and that, uh, who was it? Was it Dan or no, John Mitchell? I think you may have mentioned that we actually did leave the door open for this change in the future. And I don't want us to feel like we're, we're reneging on that, on that promise. Um, but at some point we have to be able to, as a group, say, yes, we're going to reopen this or not. Um, does anybody feel like we're being hasty about this or they want to raise another point? I just, I'm not quite sure how to go here other than to, I'm not sure where to go next with this other than to say, is there any objection to not making this change? And I don't want to force that on people. At, at some point, anybody who's making changes to attributes also needs to change all the SDKs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you're saying there's going to be an Uber PR that's going to hit like five different repos. <laughs> that's what the cost is, right? I, I, I just, I just spent whatever, five days uh, dealing with spec version and cloud events version and splitting those up and, and snapping to the reality of this. So um, that me, makes me revisit the code, which means making that change at this point now has real cost. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was referring to when I said this just introduces unnecessary churn. Okay. So I'm not hearing any, any huge objection. Um, Kevin, since you're on the call, are you okay with the decision to leave it as is? I know you're not thrilled with it because you opened the PR, but... That's fine. Like that? If that, that is a group decision, that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to warn the group that in the future, we should reduce such a breaking change. We at least should have at least one thing stick with us. So we can smoothly, you know, uh, maintain the forward and the backward uh, compatibility. The good thing about the version 0 2 is that, okay, you guys are now the extensions at the envelope. So that means I can still keep using the cloud event version as an extension in my spec. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> That's funny, but yes, you can. We, we, made, we made two major changes here uh, in this version. First of all, everything is lowercase. And second, we rename rena rena the majority of the properties. So uh, it's not just the version, it's, it's, it's mostly everything. Okay, I think we're I think we're circling around the decision. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Zoe, I also just uh, want to like add a little bit to what Kevin said because uh, we at Oracle are a little bit early adapter for this, and the problem is not like uh, for us to change something. It's like if we change it, then all of our clients, like we have multiple internal teams which are going to use it. So if we change something, all of them also have to change. So the uh, I agree that it's early phase. We should be like ready to accept changes, but if we can kind of like minimize the breaking change, it will be like good for everybody. Yep, I think everybody would agree with that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what we're doing now with the SDK work and that we're actually writing code that's part of the project that will cause inertia in, uh, um, in elementary things like, like attribute names, et cetera. So I think that's fairly automatic because otherwise literally whoever ch makes that change needs to go through all the code to make sure that it all works. Yep. Okay. So I think we're circling around the decision of closing this PR and the associated issue with no action. Is there any uh, objection to that? Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, Kevin, for taking the time to open up the issue for and having or forcing us to have the discussion because it is a good discussion to have. Um, okay, cool, thank you very much. All right, so um, according to my estimation, we have two other issues that are candidates for 0 0.2 milestone. Um, this issue wanted some clarification around the JSON section, or the, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the JSON data, or the, the JSON serialization of the data attribute. And Clemens and the author went back and forth a little, but since then, the actual doc has been changed and there's some new text in there. And according to Clemens, and I, I agree with this, um, 
it sounds like this actual new text um, removes the problem because the, the objection or the concern was around the use of the word object in the old text. And that's no longer there, as you can see by the text here. So I think we can actually close this issue now. However, I, before we actually close it, I'd like to wait for uh, Reed to confirm that it actually is okay. But either way, I don't think this is necessarily a blocker because it is just a very minor change um, to, the, to the spec if we do it. I don't think it's a blocker for 2.0, but I wanted you guys to take a look at it and confirm that yes, it is not a blocker and or get your take on whether we can actually close this. Any questions or comments on that? I guess to make it more clear, I'm proposing that we close this with no action once we get confirmation from the original author. Okay, not hearing any objection. The last issue I think we had was this person was suggesting that we have a, another transport for web push protocol. Um, <clears throat> since that time, I've asked the person if they'd be interested in writing a PR. I've also asked if someone else would like to volunteer to write it. I haven't heard anybody jump up and down saying yes. Um, now, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily proposing that we close this with no action because it, it could be that people haven't had time to look at it yet. However, like the other issues that have been sort of uh, stale for a while, I, um, I want to move it out of the 0 0.2 bucket and that way it's not blocking us from looking at a 0 0.2 milestone. So is there any objection to moving this out of the 0 0.2 milestone? With the assumption that we could always add it, add in the transport later. Obviously, it's just not. It's not. It's just removing it from being a blocker. I'm not a hundred percent sure of what I'm going to say right now, but um, since this is just HTTP, um, I believe that HTTP HTTP two push is just using the normal HTTP message semantics for um, um, push, which means. It sends a normal HTTP message with headers and um, a uh, an entity body, which means that is effectively already covered by our um, HTTP mapping, because the HTTP mapping maps at the level of RFC thirty two seventy two thirty one. The HTTP two maps that to a different wire protocol in its own spec, but that's effectively what it does. And I think that also covers HTTP 2 push. The question there is whether we need to have a, uh, a spec that is you know, equivalent to our webhook spec. And there, I don't think it's more necessary than being specific about you know, how to do an HTTP request with our, with our HTTP mapping. So I'm not sure that spec is actually necessary. OK. So it sounds like um, you're, you might actually be advocating to close it with no action, which is a valid choice. Uh, but, it, but the more important question for me right now is it, you're then agreeing that it's not a blocker for 0 0.2. Right? I certainly don't think so. <laughs> right. Okay. So is there anybody on the call who thinks that this should be a blocker for 0 0.2? And we could save the discussion about whether it's a valid request at all for, for another time. Okay. Not hearing any objection then, I'd like to move it out of 0 0.2 and we can have the discussion later. And so Clemens, could you possibly put a comment in here, uh, basically restating what you just said and see what they're, uh, what they're yeah. the first directions. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So with that, I believe we've actually addressed all of the requirements for 0 0.2 uh, in terms of open issues. I think we have the main uh, known re uh, requests for, uh, for mandated properties. I know there are still some properties, some optional properties that are in discussion, but I think 0 0.2 milestone just basically says, you know, try to nail down the, the required ones. Uh, we have this list of core protocols. Um, I'm not hearing anybody jump them down saying we have to have any brand new ones. I mean, we have some things like RocketMQ, and by 0 0.2, we don't have to decide to have it in or out. We just have to have sort of an initial list of ones we want to consider, and I think we have that list already. So at this time, what I'd like to do is to propose that we give everybody one week of review time and I guess like you could call it a, a voting period as well. So one week to review all the current documentation. So that's the main spec itself, all the transport specs and the primer um, with the goal of within this one week, people saying yes or no to approving it as a 0 0.2 
with the final deadline for the, or the, I'm sorry, the final tallying of the vote happening on next week's call. So one week review slash voting period. What do people think? Any, any concerns with heading that direction before I formally ask the question? Okay, any objection then to basically starting the one week review and voting period? Cool. That means we should be able to get to, assuming everybody approves it, to 0 0.2 in time for KubeCon, which would be very exciting. Cool. Thank you very much. And I will send a note to the mailing list to ask to, for those people who could not make the call to do the review. And hi, Jim. I see you on the call. Thank you. Um, all right. Moving forward. Uh, we had a Rocket MQ transport binding. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can you close 329, please? Um, hold on. Wait. Because that's we we had a we had a um, we had a uh, commit that we messed up jointly. Oh, so this one's already been done. Um, yeah, it's done. It's oh, just yeah. that okay. we closed it because you and me we kind of messed. And uh, I think. Uh, yeah, you're being generous. I think I messed it up. But yeah, hold on. Well, we both did. <laughs> um, I gave you something that wasn't perfect enough for you to just easily merge it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, Thank I'll you. close it after the call, but I'll add a reference to the PR so we want people to understand why we closed it. Um, uh, okay, so just remind myself. Cool. Thank you, sir. All right, Rocket MQ. So this person would like to add a Rocket MQ transport. Wait, isn't there a PR that goes with this? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Doy. It is the PR. All right, so this person is proposing a rocket MQ transport binding. What do people think about this? I think about that the exact same way I think about the Patrick Polzar. And that is rocket MQ is choosing to have its own wire protocol for uh, one project while the rest of the world tries really hard to either, in the messaging world at least, tries really hard to either go and align on MQP or on MQPT um, or, or on Kafka. So that's the three big ones. And RocketMQ wants to do its own thing. And my, my argument keeps being um, that um, we're trying, we should try not to bless um, project preparatory protocols. Anybody else have a comment? So have we not established a precedence by, don't we have a NATS binding today? We do have a NATS binding, yes. So does that set a precedent for doing these sort of, um, dare I say custom? Yeah, but there are multiple, I think there are multiple implementations. I think we had that discussion. There was, there, there are multiple implementations of NATS. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> let me just double check. He made some comments. I'll make sure I'm remembering correctly. Okay, yeah, he said he's been adopted by hundreds of companies. He, I don't think he says there are multiple implementations. And if I hear you correctly, Clemens, I think that's your biggest concern is the multiple implementation aspect. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's effectively so. So that's the that's my concern is um, is in the messaging space. There is convergence towards um, a single protocol, which is all great. Um, and um, there's a few outliers and starting to um, you know, help the outliers. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, but that's, you know, that's my, that's, that might be my, 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 uh, my stance toward trying to you know, bring peace and harmony to the messaging space. Um, that might be my attitude there. Um, and might not be the right one for this project, but I just don't believe we should go and, um, and help proprietary protocols get blessing of interoperability projects. Right, so, so let's be very explicit then. Um, does Rocket MQ satisfy these two points? It does not. Does anybody else have an opinion on that? I would just say that I thought of those as being ORed together, not ANDed together. So it would only need 
one of those. And we can argue about whether or not it has one. It's neither. That's point either. Okay, I agree with you, Rachel, that it is an or. So Cummins, you don't think it satisfies either one of those, right? No, it doesn't. No, this is Heinz. I agree. It it really doesn't satisfy either one of them. Okay. Does anybody on the call think that it satisfies either one of those? Okay. So what yeah. I would recommend, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Clemens. So, so that said, um, I, I want to have a, dis I really want to have a, deb a debate with uh, um, the open messaging project on how we could probably go and align things better. Um, and so it's not that I'm, that I'm just categorically saying, hey, we should shut the door on that entire effort because the open messaging uh, uh, proposal also came from, um, I think, from that same group of people. Um, so it's not that I want to you know, shut them out, but it's, I, think, I think we can do better in terms of interoperability um, than, than um, you know, trying to push proprietary approaches. So um, we, had some immediate, we had some initial discussions in our talk, before our talk in China, and uh, I think it's well worth having a debate about how we can go and align both the open messaging effort and the Rocket MQ effort with you know, the greater interoperability effort that, efforts that exist. Um, and uh, that's worth, that's a discussion worth having. And I realize that Rocket MQ and open messaging are efforts that are coming out of China. And there are, um, you know, communication barriers and for some folks also, you know, time zone barriers, et cetera. So we should go and have a, have a conversation how we can go and align those things on standards. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. I'm just trying to think <clears throat> of the best way to move forward to actually make that happen. Because I think, I think they'd be very open to the idea, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, that was also my impression. It's just that um, I, this, it, so by the rules that we've set, it doesn't meet the bar. And I think that needs to have a, it, it needs to have, it's a broader discussion needs to be had in terms of how we can go and align those, how we can go and align those efforts. I would rather, Frankly, I would rather have for Rocket MQ to go and snap to a protocol that everybody speaks and also open messaging to be something that kind of is a higher level API project um, uh, that helps interoperability rather than kind of build another JMS effectively, right? JMS was built for um, a world where everybody kept their pro product, uh, protocol proprietary and, uh, and we should not you know, promote that again. What we're doing here is real wiring rock, and that's what we're aiming for, and we should stay true to that. So, okay, um, I'm wondering <clears throat> whether it would make sense to reach out to these guys, because I suspect at least some of them will probably be at KubeCon. Um, Clemens, would you be open to me initiating a face-to-face -face conversation with these guys to try to, to get that alignment that you're talking about? Yeah, I think it would be useful if we had that. Okay. Is there anybody else on the call who would like to participate in that conversation? That way we can try to align schedules. Okay. If you guys... I would actually oh. like to participate in that as well. Heinz? Okay. Hold on. Um, hold on. Uh, you guys can see what I'm typing. Sorry there. I was on mute. No, not a problem. Okay, so hi. And, and I'm, I'm seeing that I'm seeing that really from the dual dual hat perspective of, of both um, from the MVP Oasis MVP TC com, uh, committee perspective as well as uh, from here. Okay, if there's somebody on the call <clears throat> who would like to join the conversation, um, just ping me offline. And I'll, I'll I'll loop you into the chat. But I'll, I'll take the action to sort of reach out to those guys and see if they'll be at KubeCon and we can have a conversation there. Um, okay, so relative to the PR itself, it sounds like the action is to write back to them saying that the group does not believe it meets the minimum bar of one of those two requirements listed in the primer, I mean, in these two points. Um, I don't mind taking that action item to put that in there. Um, I'll leave the open, I'm sorry, I'll leave the PR open just so they can reply back if they think that we're wrong and they can explain why he actually does meet one of those two bars. But other than that, unless they come back and convince us otherwise, we'll eventually close it. 
but I wanted to give them a chance to, to reply back, but I'll take the action to let them know what our dis current decision is. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, cool, thank you guys very much. <clears throat> okay, um, what time do we have left? Okay, 12 minutes. So we have, I was looking through the list of open issues or PRs. Um, there's, a, there's a couple that are outstanding that need updates. Um, uh, Rachel, do you know if Thomas is gonna have a chance to come back to this one or do you think he's looking for someone else to take ownership of it? I have not heard from him that it's on his radar. Okay. Um, do you think he'd object if someone else took a, took a pass at it? Probably not. Okay. We'll see. Maybe I'll either find somebody or try to find some time myself to work on it. Okay. Um, I think the other ones, I think this one's still being up or being discussed. I think the, this one is being discussed as well because it's related to that one. Um, now that we have these two PRs from Sarah. I believe there's open comments on there or, or, or questions. And <clears throat> I know Sarah's been busy with other things like the safe stuff, um, but she hasn't replied back to us on those. And I, my general sense is I don't necessarily think these are necessarily needed. And I commented on those, both of those PRs that if we don't hear back, I was gonna propose that they be closed with no action. And I haven't heard back from, you, uh, from her on either one of those. So I, my proposal for the group here is to close these two PRs here with no well, action. I would suggest that, that the idea, like the proposal for more asynchronous participation is about, like those are about letting us vote not in the meeting because it takes up so much time in the meeting when we have to vote. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good change. Has that change already been adopted? Like do we now just like do voting asynchronously? We do, we allow for, we do allow for asynchronous votes. Um, I'm ch I, honestly, I can't remember offhand, I have to go back and look at the governance doc. But I think for, PR approval type votes. Obviously we do those in calls like we did today. For votes where it's a formal voting. But we, but we didn't have a vote today. We didn't have to no, it, no, you're right. It's more, uh, it's more of, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Um, Lazy consensus. Yeah, kind of, that kind of thing. But, it's just something like that. But yes, but you're right. For formal votes, we do allow for a week long process. Uh, okay. asynchronous. So this is, this is a proposal to say, let's just vote. Like when we have to vote, let's just vote like that so that it doesn't take up all of our time. Yeah. And I, I think that's a good change to make. Yeah, but I think we already have that in the governance doc. I will double check though. Okay, if it's yeah. in the governance doc, I'm okay closing it. If it's not in the governance doc, I would like for the, like I would be willing to push these ahead because I okay. just want like smoother. Movements. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Just double check since we have a whole nine minutes. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Let's see voting. Um, So that last bullet point seems to have it. The voting process is that you comment on the PR, a yes vote, a no vote, or an abstain. Yeah, so I think between these two things, between this section right here, I think it's probably covered. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, we can close those docs then. Okay, cool. All right, this would be, might be a first. We reached the end of the agenda. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up before I do final roll call? Wow, cool. Okay, um, Neil, I don't think I've heard you yet. Are you there? Uh, yep, I'm here. Excellent. Dan Barker? Yep, I'm here. Yep, okay, I think I heard Rohit. Uh, Doug M, are you there? Here. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Fabio? I'm here. Okay, Joe Sherman? Yes, I'm here, thanks. Excellent, and I heard Jem. Is there anybody on the roll call that I missed? I think I got everybody. I got Vladimir. All right. In that case, last chance. Any topics you guys would like to bring up? We have a whole eight minutes left. Cool. Exactly. Okay. And just a reminder. Can you stay on the call afterwards, if you would. I'm sorry. Say it again. Can you stay on the call for five minutes? Oh afterwards? yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. okay for everybody else, uh, just a quick reminder: <clears throat> one week review period slash voting period for the specs itself to go to zero point two. Please look those over when you get a chance. And um, with that, I think we're done. Thank you guys very much. Okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Thanks bye. guys. Yep. Thank you, bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Not for secrets, but for debugging. 
Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, because this is going to be recorded, I, let's not annoy everybody else. Let me oh, send okay. you a link. Let me send you a link to my private Zoom, and we'll, we'll hop on that. Yes, sir. Okay. Talk to you over there. Bye, everybody. Thank you.